Hi, well, I'm Stephen Neshaba, and I want to tell you a little bit about electron delocalization and resonance. And uh, the uh, set of ideas that I want to touch on here are listed here, uh, the X, Y, Z pattern, a little bit lone pairs, and so forth. And to do that, I'll just, uh, I'm, I have a number of examples to show you. So uh, the X, Y, Z pattern, uh, what does that mean? Well, what it means is I, I imagine that I have three atoms. There's a double bond between the first two, and the third's got a single bond to it, but it has a lone pair of electrons. And whenever you see that X, Y, Z pattern, one thing that you can think is, oh, I could imagine another Lewis structure that involves those electrons coming down there, forming a double bond, and those electrons in here leaving that uh, double bond and, uh, and, and forming a, a lone pair of electrons on, on X. And that's what I've, I've drawn here, that lone pair of electrons, there they are. The electrons that form that extra bond, the pi bond between Y and Z is, is right there. So let's do some examples. Here's ozone, okay. Uh, does it satisfy the XYZ pattern? Well, I think so. Uh, I've got uh, a double bond here, single bond, and a third atom that's got um, a, a lone pair. It actually has three lone pairs. And uh, so uh, I can imagine now this pair of electrons coming down here, those pair, that pair of electrons leaving to form a lone pair, and uh, here's that double bond. Now, a little bit about the uh, nomenclature here. Uh, what we've drawn here are different resonance forms, okay? And uh, so there's the word resonance. Um, and uh, the uh, pair of electrons that uh, came down off Z to form the double bond, that's called the allylic lone pair of electrons. I have this uh, phrase equivalent or inequivalent. What we have to decide here is um, do I have any reason to prefer this uh, resonance form over that one? And the answer here is no. I, 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 these uh, oxygens are all identical to each other, so uh, I would say these are equivalent resonance forms. Okay, And when you have equivalence resonance forms, it means that I have to, in my mind, kind of think that reality is some average of those. That averaging gives rise to this idea of fractional bond order and partial charge. Here's how it works. Um, in this resonance form, I have a double bond. In this one, I have a single bond. What's the truth? Well, it must be some sort of average. So I would say that the bond order between the first two oxygens is not one, not two, but one and a half, a one and a half bond order. Same thing here, one and a half. What about the charges? Well, uh, I've, I've drawn in the formal charges for you here. Um, in both of these equivalent resonance forms, the central oxygen has a plus one charge. But uh, notice here, there's a zero formal charge here, a minus one here. What's the average? Well, I would say the average must be minus one half on that oxygen. Same thing here, right? A minus one and a zero, so that must have a partial charge of minus a half. So, uh, whenever we have equivalent resonance forms, we typically get uh, fractional bond orders and, and partial charges. One more thought here before I go into the next example. It's useful to think about how many electrons are delocalized. That is, how many are playing in this uh, XYZ pattern. Well, it's kind of obvious here that there's those two that did that and then the two that left. So, we would say that the number of delocalized electrons in any XYZ pattern is uh, two pairs, or you know, there are four delocalized electrons uh, that are that are that ozone has. We would say ozone has four delocalized electrons, pi electrons. Okay, uh, how about NO2? Similar kind of story here. Uh, I have a double bond, single bond, and the third atom, the Z-type atom, has a lone pair, so I can do the same thing. Down they go, up you go. Uh, and uh, so that lone pair is there now, and that those electrons are now forming the, the uh, second bond, the pi bond. Uh, partial charges looks like minus a half plus one minus a half again. Um, fractional bond orders, sure, I've got a bond order of two, bond order of one, the average two, uh, one and a half. How about uh, this one? This is uh, CH3. C double bond O, CH2 with a net minus charge. And um, so I've got a lone pair of electrons on that carbon. 
And now uh, I can say, oh yeah, that looks like a Z. Down they go, up those electrons go to form now this, uh, this oxygen uh, with a minus one formal charge. Uh, this negative formal charge in that carbon has now gone away because it's formed a double bond. It's still XYZ, so we would still say that there are four uh, delocalized electrons um, in, this, in this situation. But the, what the difference is that these are no longer equivalent resonance forms. How do I know that? Well, in this case, I have a formal charge of minus one on a carbon. In this case, I have a formal minus charge uh, on the oxygen. Those are clearly not equivalent situations. However, uh, we can also say when we have inequivalent resonance forms, which one we like better, which one is predominant. And generally, the way that we do that is we say, oh, well, um, uh, I think that the more electronegative element, oxygen, will claim that uh, minus one charge. So uh, we generally prefer, we'd say, this is a, a more predominant uh, resonance form. Okay, uh, here's uh, one last example. Uh, it doesn't satisfy the XYZ pattern, but there are still delocalized electrons. I just wanted to show you an example of this. Um, so I have a carbon over here, okay? This is the allylic uh, 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 cation, it's called. And um, there's a, this carbon here doesn't even have a complete octet. And there's no lone pair floating around here, but this carbon could claim that pair of electrons by stealing it basically from that carbon, and that's what I've drawn here. Now this carbon uh, has lost a pair of electrons, so it's got a plus one charge, and this carbon here has a complete octet, so um, it's happy. Uh, we have a similar thing that we would say, oh, the bond order must be one and a half, uh, the partial charges must be plus a half, plus a half, and, and zero on that carbon. And, um, but the big difference now, of course, is that uh, besides the fact that it's not XYZ delocalization, we also have just two delocalized electrons uh, that are, um, that are uh, claimable in, in that molecule. Okay.